Welcome back for another helping of oysters, clams, and katanas presented by Bolin Media. I am Ross Bolin Sama here today with Barrett Dudley Sama to digest and discuss the sixth episode of Shogun on Hulu slash FX titled Ladies of the Willow World. Barrett, how are we? We're doing okay. Yeah. You know? Just uh just trying to trying to navigate my way through the uh through the willow world. And it's full of it's full of pillows and willows and willows. <laughs> it's the willow world. It's the willow world. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just waiting for, really, just waiting for somebody to um, to reward me for doing such a good job at work that they uh, that they they gift me a courtesan such as Kiku, who has spent many years learning the art of sake pouring. Yeah, you, you have know, to do they, a little pump fake. Little, a little, yeah, a little. Yeah. To get it right. Right. You I know? think that's to that's to like Slosh jostle it around. the yeah, liquid yeah, yeah. a little bit. Just so. Just oh, yeah. so. Just so. But not everybody can jostle the right way. No. You know? No, but so, she's she's one of the best. She's one she is. Some have called she her is. the goat. So yeah, I, I, that that is the feeling that I get. That is the feeling that I get. Kiku. Um yeah. 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 Before we dive into this episode of Shogun, give us a follow on social media if you would please. We're at Oysters Clams Cockles on Instagram, at Oysters Clams and Cockles on TikTok, and at Clams and Cockles on X, formerly known as Twitter. Also follow Barrett at Barrett Dudley on Instagram and X, and follow me at WR Bolin on X and Instagram as well, please. And thank you. All right, Barrett, ladies of the Willow World, uh, I guess first off, how'd you feel about this one? Uh, I thought this was the first episode where we kind of spun the wheels a little bit. Yeah, a um, little bit. Definitely, I definitely did not leave this episode on the same high uh, that I that I did the first five, and that's not to say it was bad. Just to say that I, in, it, like, honestly, it would have been kind of insane for this show to deliver ten episodes. It just absolutely slapped. Um, but yeah, kind of a kind of a long one to basically tell us that like Blackthorn is still not getting his shit back. Explain a little bit more of the of the uh, Mariko backstory and tell us how it ties to Ochiba Nokato. And um, then set us up for Crimson Sky, right? Like, yeah, it was like an hour to get there. And I also now we've kind of talked about this before, how sometimes an episode will leave you with questions. And then the very next episode, they kind of like or or in a, in a future episode, they kind of almost acknowledge that they left you with that question and then they answer it a little bit. So we'll obviously get to the what I thought was, I guess, the most important story and scene of the episode which was Mariko and Blackthorn going to Willow World but I I I don't know what the I don't know what was happening there I don't know what the point I don't I do not know what the point of that was or what they were saying with that or or what it means for any of the relationships involved. Yeah, hopefully you and I can talk it out because that's so, that's a place I had some confusion yeah. too. Now this was definitely more of a middle of the season yeah. plot building episode than the last few. Uh, it was still interesting, right? Was, you know, still kind of, at least for me, it was pretty gripping. Still really well done, but more of your standard episode six type shit. Yeah, right? it yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Like you said, it, it, crazy run, the first five to end each one on sort of a high where you like can't wait for the next episode. This was the first one that was a little more average, right? Yeah, yeah. Not to say there's anything wrong with that. Like you said, can't be done all 10 episodes. Stories don't work that way. But, uh, but yeah, this one slowed down a bit, right? We started with the cold open flashback to 22 years ago at Azuki Castle, which I wasn't really sure where that was. If that, Because like later, they refer to the castle in Osaka as Osaka Castle. Mm. <laughs> so maybe this was like the former <laughs> capital. Right, um, right. It just wasn't that long ago, 22 yeah. years. So, But it's where a young Mariko is introduced to Rory, the daughter of the lord that Mariko's samurai dad, Akechi, serves. And Rory, of course, becomes Lady... Ochiba yes. later in life. And as children, Mariko and Rory bond and become very close friends. They sleep back to back. That's cute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as conflict between their fathers brews. Like, uh, Mariko's father and the Taiko pretty clearly don't get along from the get-go here. Right, right, yeah. And they're showing, like, Mariko's father's like, ah, I hate this guy. I want to do something. Yeah, Toronaga's yeah, like, yeah. not yet. And that was an important piece to take away from this yeah. flashback was yeah. that Toronaga is very much like guiding 
uh, Mariko's father, right? And uh, they get older, the two girls. They train together in combat. That's, and that, that is, I would note, in that scene where that you're talking about the you go back to sleep, you're just dreaming flashback, right? Like, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So that uh, bad man... Badman leader is he's chopping heads. Yeah, just of, of we don't get a reason of, why. No, we don't know who those people are. They all seem they looked kind of like monks, didn't they? Don't they all have like yeah, maybe bald heads? It, maybe it was a religious thing. Not sure. I don't know. But he's just he's he's whacking heads. He was going there. to town. Yeah, dude. had him yeah. just lined up one head yeah. after another is rolling. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the girls get a little older. They train together in combat, which is always a cool thing to see. Uh. Then Mariko is of course married off to Bontaro. So. The combat, yeah, that so pretty early on in the in the you know they go to the they go to the twenty two years flashback and then obviously they're a little bit older and you can and and that's where you probably first pick up on oh wait Ruri is Lady Ochiba because the uh, the actor the actress is the same yeah as the the one playing her now same goes for Mariko what, was that what, was it those two fighting against each other or wasn't Ochiba watching I thought they were training together. Uh, like the two of them were both fighting together. Yeah, for, so, what, uh, the, there was a lot happening. They kind of bounced back and forth between these flashbacks and and current time in the first half of the episode. So I wasn't, I wasn't sure, but I thought that it was Mariko training on the you know on the long pole on the long sword. Yeah, yeah, whatever that thing I, is I'm called. Not sure I forget what that's, what that's called. It has some crazy name. But I didn't think that that was Ruri opposing her on the opposite side that would make that would be interesting of course because kind of seems like we're headed there again but i I thought that maybe ruri was just like a spectator for that and it was uh mariko that was you know kind of being trained in the the art of combat the art of combat i thought it was the two of them training together um regardless they're both present and then uh yeah mariko's married off to bontaro the girls are separated as a result of the politicking of men, right? A big theme in this episode is how the Japanese women, um, as Mariko puts it later in the episode, like they're always at war. They're just at war because, and they're at the they're at the, you know, the whims of men. Whatever they decide, it affects all these women too, and they don't really have a say in it so much, or at least they didn't um, during these two girls' childhood. Oh, and Rory or Lady Ochiba's father is the dude that Mariko's father assassinated. So there's the. Yeah, you know, some bad yes. blood between them that gets yes. born there. So right, so that's kind of the 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 a little bit of the reveal, I guess. It is a reveal. Is that Lady Ochiba, mother of the heir? Yes. Consort and child heir bearer to the Taiko. Right. Was the daughter of the previous ruler, who Mariko's father killed, and she be- like Lady Ochiba believes that it was at the behest of, of Toronaga. Toronaga. Yes. So she friggin' hates Toronaga for yeah. this reason, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, after her dad is killed, Rory becomes a concubine to the Tycho, who, as Barrett just said, has failed to produce an heir up to that point. She gets renamed Lady Ochiba. The dude apparently tried to make a baby with hundreds of women, mm-hmm. as we find out at the end of the episode. Yeah, and the, the seed, it wasn't seeding. Yeah, and she's know? the only one that succeeded. Right. Now, did you get any idea on how she was the only one that succeeded or yeah. why? Well, do you mean beyond the very clear and obvious explanation that she gives, right? Where she looked fate in the eyes and she scratched or she scratched she lo- its eyes she, out. She looked fate in the in the face. She turned towards it and she scratched its eyes out. Yeah, yeah, that's how she did it. Yeah, but <laughs> so I mean, my no, I thought it was I, some of this didn't totally work for me in execution uh, with, with, with her explanation for things. And, and also just that character in general, she's very mysterious is feeling uh, like, I don't know. I get, I, I, hopefully I'm not going to get canceled here. She's feeling like almost like a little too stereotypical, like quiet, but reserved Japanese woman, but who's, who's like e- extremely evil. Right. Like the thing she's doing where she talks really slowly, but that, in a really intimidating way. Is that a stereotype that you've come across before? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, it, it, it reminds me of something. But then I was like, I was, I was, I don't think, think you're going to get canceled. For I was this thinking one. about this before the podcast and like something about it feels kind of rote to me. It feels a little like cliche, a little cartoony. Yeah. But then I couldn't think of anything else. Like I couldn't, I couldn't come up with like a one to one, uh, you know, comparison for what else has been like that. But she's, She's doing like the kind of high voice 
and she's very, you know, she's porcelain skinned and diminutive a little bit, but like obviously carries a huge fucking stick and is scary and intimidating and in control and lording over big bad Ishido, right? Like underneath the surface, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so but but her whole little act is not is not totally working for me with the with the with with that with everything that I just described. With her so being even, this quiet little chirpy mouse, basically. But, you but, asked, like, but this episode didn't do anything for you in the way of an explanation? Because that was almost half the point. Like they give you the background on her between the flashbacks and Mariko's stories and whatnot. They tell you like why she is the way she is, pretty much. Like it's almost like you're watching the monster get created mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because she grows up this young girl where she's the you know daughter of the ruler of yeah, Japan. Right. Her dad gets whacked. Yeah. They smuggle her out of there, give her to the now ruler of Japan's wife, who is like, "Hey, you're gonna let this dude impregnate you, mm-hmm. and I'll hook you up with this mirror heirloom." <laughs> Yeah, they didn't have they did not have mirrors back then. That's that, that was really a, special. A mirror is very special. Yeah, yeah. She she you know you see her like going cold and kind of like yeah her eyes glazing over as the dude's climbing on top of her like uh-huh. essentially giving the impression that like this woman has been trampled by men and their pursuits her whole life and now she's popped out the other side that the mother of the air she has some degree of power and say and she's gonna wield it to the full potential to try to get revenge. Over the who thinks who she thinks is responsible for all of her you know uh, misfortune, which is Tornaga. No, I didn't think they did a great job of this. Yeah, I thought it was okay. Uh, I I because like I hear what you're saying, but we also haven't. You got to keep in mind we haven't gotten that much of her I, yet. I know, I know, but this this is. I don't know. I'm I'm tr- I'm trying to make it work in my mind, but like we don't we don't empathize with her because her father was a shithead and deserved to die. And was a terrible ruler. They've, so, yeah, they, they've made that pretty they clear. They gave us enough of that, I think. Yeah, and then she's shepherded away to safety so that she doesn't have to die with her dad. Well, that safety is that. That seems like a positive debatable. for her. Uh, and then she gets brought back in to be a concubine and mother to the new ruler, so that she can be a powerful player with an heir to the throne. Like, isn't like I've seen enough Game of Thrones. Like, that's what isn't that what people want? Maybe it's not what she wanted. I right. don't know, but she, the point is, she's very pissed off. And then and again, evil. now okay, now I am, yeah. now I am going to get canceled. So many shows yeah. have gone to such great lengths to show us the pain inflicted on women, and this one, so that, so this one almost didn't go far enough to give me like enough of a reason to believe that she's now this like psychopath, basically scorned to to violence and right? evil. Right? Or are you not? Get, or are you? Are 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 you? Okay, I feel like you're empathizing way more with. Lady Ochiba. Like, like maybe you don't even think that she is a psychopath, that she is warranted in her quest for vengeance. I mean, she hasn't... But I'm so, I'm, I'm so Torinaga, Torinaga-pilled that yeah, but like, she hasn't I can't, done even, anything. I can't even see, see it. She hasn't done anything to Torinaga yet. That's maybe part of the well, divide. Well, she's trying to get his ass impeached and murdered. That's what she says. Yeah. It hasn't happened. I'm, I'm, I'm still suspicious yeah, her of her motives. Are, her pawns are useless. They, for sure. But one of the things that is curious <laughs> to me is like when she delivers this explanation about you know how she became who she is, she doesn't actually tell us how she, out of hundreds of women, because that that line, hundreds yeah, of women, right, right? That is that is making it sound like this dude was sterile. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens? So where'd the baby come from? That's my next question. Well, she got pregnant by somebody else. They didn't have DNA testing back then. Okay. All right. So who was that person? Yeah, that's, that's that, where my question is. That's, that's probably a good. I, uh, that did cross my mind that maybe she got pregnant by somebody else, but it, I, must, it, I think it just went one in one ear and right, right out the other. So I, well, they yeah. don't touch on it in yeah, any no, way, they shape, don't. or form. But I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a good. It seems very possible. That's a good note and a good insight. Uh, I- anyway, I, look, l- let me just take a step back. Obviously, part of what we're supposed to be seeing is what you're saying, is that she has been put through the ringer, regardless of how awful her father was. It, that's a that's a loss for any child. Right. And then she's kind of returned to the, not necessarily the, you know, because the, the murderers, the, the, uh, the, the people that led the coup, right, they, they didn't take power. Somebody else did. Yeah, they're gone. But so to, to kind of be... That's also rough to be put into the service of the people that took over your dad's spot. Well, and then another there's point, obviously like beginning the, of this season, she gets kidnapped by Toranaga. That's right. That's right. 
Um, and then she is, it, it's, it's, we've, then we've got the classic, like middle ages, like, you know, you're here, like you basically forced, you know, relationships and intimacy with this guy. That's your, you know, that's your, essentially your, uh, your owner now. Right. Um, and so, yeah, all of that, I think you're, you're doing a much better job than, than I was while watching of kind of like taking that all in to like give more. Give a little bit more dimension to what she's doing as a character. I'm uncancelable. Yeah, but 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 I, what what I really so I, so thank you for for kind of outlining all of that and 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 helping me get there. I'll I'll come back to my original thing, which is that the little squeaky voice and slow paced talking to oh, show to show me how sinister she is. Yeah. is not working for me. I love it. Yeah, I'm 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 in on it. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's our little flashback situation with uh, Mariko and, and Lady Ochiba. Uh, in the present day, Tornaga and company are still reeling from the earthquake that we find out killed thousands of their people. And as we feared, took out a bunch of Tornaga's army. Yep. They don't get into the specifics of how many of those thousands of people were from the army specifically. Right. But it seems like a lot. does seem like they're pretty damn concerned about their forces now, um, considering this natural disaster. John Blackthorne, uh, the Anjin, is given a promotion for saving Toronaga's life for a second time, much to the dismay of Yabashige, Omi, Nagakado, and <laughs> probably just most of Toronaga's so, yeah. <laughs> people in general. Um, he gets a fief, more fiefage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 600 generous koku annually come from this fief. Uh, and he also becomes Toronaga's chief admiral and general of the Cannon Regiment, uh, Yabushige and his nephew Omi still feel like they're... Omi, Omi had a short reign as uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> as leader of the uh, of Canon practice. About a half episode total, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's out. New coach is in. Um, Yabushige and Omi still feel like they're like totally screwed as, as part of Toronaga's crew, but they don't really seem to have a plan on how to handle that other than for Yabushige to write another will. Mm-hmm. I kind of expect because this that we get this early in the episode, and I kind of expected later on we'd get more Yabushige scheming. Uh -huh. But he's kind of just seems to be along for the ride. Yeah, that's that that that's a yes. That was definitely notable in this episode. Is that I, I mean, you could say that Yabushige and Omi are resigned to being on Toronaga's side almost. Seems like it. now I think they're I think they definitely have more more cards to play. Yeah, especially given the uh, the the Kiku of it all. Right. But but yeah, they're for this episode they are like. We're, we're just sitting ducks here. Like, what are we supposed to do? You know? Yeah, at least they don't show us any moves yep. that they're making, right? Um, Toranaga forbids Bontaro from seeing his wife, Mariko, for seven days as punishment for dishonoring the Anjin's house last episode. Uh, then uh, Blackthorn and Mariko have an audience with Toranaga. Blackthorn tries to refuse all Toranaga's promotions and gifts. He still doesn't get it, this dude, that that Tornaga is not simply going to give him his ship and his men and yeah. let him leave. It's almost, I was annoyed yeah. watching the scene. I'm just like, come, like, dude, come on. Get this through your thick skull. Yeah. You're stuck here, bro. I, I, as, as, Deal with as it. As far as wheels spinning, the, 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 this is definitely where I felt it the most. Yeah. This is, I, I think, the third episode in a row. You're like this again? Where there's mention of like Blackthorn leaving the Japans and getting his ship and his men back. And it's like, dude. The Japans. It, it, we've been here for three months now. Like, it's not happening. Yeah. You're yeah. stuck. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be a part of this war, guy, whether you like it or not. You're in charge of cannon practice now. Yeah. This is a big responsibility, do, do you coach. Want, do you want the koku or do you not want the koku? They're generous. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, like, pitches this whole place. He's like, look, I'll attack the Portuguese black ship, and it'll be mutually beneficial to both of us. Yeah. And Toranaga uh, is completely uninterested in Blackthorn's request, says the Portuguese are a friendly nation, and he would never attack them. And then does the same thing he did last week, which is basically like, please, I don't have time for this. Yeah. Go away. Now, he doesn't actually say that he would never attack them. That is something that that uh, that Mariko kind of... Translates? Translates. Yeah. Yes. He does say that they are a friendly nation. I think he has, I think he says he has no reason to attack them. Yeah. He, she's and desperately she, trying to get Blackthorn to let go yeah, of Yeah, and this. then she twists it. And, and she does. We get a little... She, get, she gets riled here a little bit. Yeah. About the his obsession with taking down the Portuguese. Yeah, she she is also like this shit again. Yeah, um, does nothing for us, guy. Where which I think is where where Toronaga catches that there uh, there's a little bit of of infighting, a little bit of argument. Arguing yeah, he says on. like what is what's with the arguing? <laughs> uh, and then Toronaga, you know, he dismisses Blackthorn 
and then tells Mariko they're dangerously close to defeat. Basically, it's like, stop fucking around. There's no room for this anymore. Whatever's going on between you two, cut it out. We're all going to die. And then he says, uh, you have to take Blackthorn to a brothel to quote unquote, settle his mind with a courtesan, but also that Mariko has to stay with him the entire time in case he talks while he pillows. And he like clearly continues to be suspicious of Mariko and Blackthorn's uh-huh. relationship yeah. on some level. He's what, very perceptive, and, but like, what was your takeaway from the ordering her well, to stay with him? So one of the things that I would note is both, uh, obviously, Bontaro makes mention of like, you know, that, that Mariko is different with with the Anjin, right? Yeah. And then Toronaga is She's obviously not as icy. Is is reading something between them. And then later on in this episode, we continue to be uh to 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 get these little, you know, notifications that the town, the people in general, are they're 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 picking up on what's being put down a little bit. Yeah. They're they're sensing the uh the sexual tension between these two. <laughs> right. Well it, it you know, like we've like we noted even back in episode one or whatever, it was fairly obvious yeah, yeah. from the get go. So I don't know if that ties in to why he's sending her to Willow World with him. Or again, I, I had a hard time with the with with the Willow World because um is is that what's next? Is that what's coming next? Can I? Uh, not quite. Okay. No, my right. my question became: what, 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 is what? is Toranaga sensing? Okay, she had a relationship with this guy. I'm gonna punish her by making by... her take him to a whorehouse. Or did he know that in sending her to a courtesan, and that it would probably be Kiku, that Kiku would pick up on it, and as she tries to do, which we'll get to. Kiku almost like tries to give them so he's she's almost like hey look yeah. I'll back out of this you two can have the room do your pillowing yes. yeah. right like did Tor- was, uh, the question becomes was Tornaga no, punishing I, her or trying to hook her up I don't think it was punishing her no so probably the other option which is like giving her some type of maybe I think there's all, I, I think there's also one other option which we'll get to when we get to the, okay, okay. the, yeah. the, the we can hold off on that. Willow World scene so back in Osaka, all hell is breaking loose now that Lady Ochiba has taken control of the Council of Regents. Ishidu has taken the other regents hostage on her behalf. A bunch of shit is on fire. Not really sure what happened there in the way of like the fight, because yeah. a little bit later on, it seems like smoothed over. Uh, it does, it does, yeah. Very yep. strange, but um, Toranaga's main man, Hiromatsu, who was sent back to uh, give his letter of resignation mm-hmm. to the council, he's forced to bail, and he's like trying to take his women with him. And but one of them's pregnant. And she's mm-hmm. like, I, I, horse, not a good idea for me. And he's like, oh fuck, sorry. Well, gotta that's, go. Yeah, that's Toronaga's pregnant wife. Okay, and his, and his n- older nun wife. I so believe. Hiromatsu's or trying no, to no, get. No, wait, he doesn't have the older nun wife. That's his pregnant wife and just his older wife. Seems problematic that Toronaga's wives are still. Yeah, it's not great there. But Hiromatsu has to bounce. Um, we see a short scene where Alvito, the Catholic. You know, Friar Tuck oh, haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He advises the. Uh, it's extra. T- it's extra friary today. Yeah, he just <laughs> got that episode. thing freshened up a bit. Um, it's just like a little halo around yeah. his head, which maybe is the point. Uh, a hair halo. <laughs> <laughs> he advises the more senior Catholic Church member that, like, he's like, "Look, things here in Osaka are not going well. Lady Ochiba despises the church. Yeah, she's got it out for us. We've picked the wrong ally. There's yeah. a lot of that going on in this episode. People telling people that they've chosen the wrong side. Yeah, yeah. He's like, we need to probably align ourselves with Toronaga rather than uh, this craziness yes. happening yeah. here in yeah. Osaka. But the other guy's not in for it. He's like, ah, that woman doesn't have any power. Writes her off because she's a woman, so right? This was another exchange that I like paused and had to like ask a question about because Friar Tuck, Friar Tuck is like, yo, wrong ally. We let's let's see if Toronaga if we can ally with Toronaga instead. Right, and then the elder guy is like, no, 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 no. Uh, he's like he he seems to spurn that notion, and then he's like, let's hope we can get him to our side afterwards. Yeah, that was a like, weird line. Wh- what? It's still not really clear on what he, he says. Meant there. Like no, and then he's like yes, no, yes. Let's get him. Well, I, it was, it, but I didn't. know, He was like saying something else, or like I couldn't tell if he was saying once all of this Osaka shit is settled, then we can try to get Toronaga. That, that I think so because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Because the person that the Osaka people are going to try to go kill is Toronaga. Is Toronaga. Yeah. Once he's 
That that's what. But that's the other that's thing you could have been what, saying is if Toranaga defeats these fuckers, mm. then we can see about right becoming right. allies with him. And then and and Laura maybe she she tried to explain that it was like that 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 Alvito was saying we need to we basically need to come to Toranaga. We need to go to him. Right. And that the elder guy was saying now now we need to, he we need him to come to us basically like yeah. we need to convert him if he makes it here to maybe you know like. We need to put religion on this man, basically. Yeah. yeah rather yeah. than just like allying with his current force. So maybe there was some some gamesmanship there. But I thought it was a confusing exchange. Yeah, it was. Nonetheless. It definitely was. Uh, we see Lady Ochiba having like a little flashback to being smuggled out of the castle after her father's murder. Then she attends a very strange play with very unique Japanese singing, uh, depicting her becoming the Taiko's. I was air I, producer. I was floored that th- some of the singing, which just sounded like one note being warbled, was actually saying stuff. That was that, 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 that like there were subtitles yeah. for those those warbles, and I thought that that was fascinating. Yeah, it was, dude. This was <laughs> you know, I it was like my, I don't I don't know. So if I'm being culturally insensitive here, please don't hesitate to correct me. But it seemed like the Japanese version of opera. Yeah, almost. Yeah, yes, and I'm sure it has a name. I right? think they even say they, the name. they do say the name at some point, uh-huh. but it was real quick and yep. yeah, I didn't take that note. Um, but I it like was, the little, dude, I like the little drum tap, the boom. easiest the little, job the, ever. The, the per, that guy. The, well, you got to have the timing right, though. It's got to be the perfect Just timing. Counting to drop, your head. To drop that little. Yeah, you're right. Boom. It's got to be because otherwise you screw the whole yeah, thing you screw, up. Right. Okay. You're holding the beat for the whole show. <laughs> you know. Uh, again, not trying to be insensitive, but this uh, this Japanese opera reminded me of the. Uh, What's the name of the bad guys in Dune? The Harkonnen? Uh-huh. The Harkonnen have that dude who does throat singing, their priest. Uh-huh. It's yeah, like, right, right. Right. like mm-hmm. it reminded yeah. me of that. Um, I don't just, think I, you're fine, Ross. I just, 10 minutes ago, I said there wasn't enough woman torture for me <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I'm willing to take these shots because because you're already under the bus. Um, <laughs> moving on, um, uh, we see Lady Ochiba in a flashback with the ruler of Japan's wife talking her into you know this heirloom mirror situation. Really weird stuff. But the Christian regents are also present at this play, which which was where I got confused because I was like, wait a minute. I thought they all just got taken hostage, like their rooms got set on fire, their families burned it, alive it, or something. <laughs> now they're all watching this opera it was, together? It was, it was confusing. I, my, my read was that the fire was erupting as these people were all like corralled, yeah, I guess. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But then also like being held hostage or being kind of like a prisoner in Osaka Castle here in Japan, it's a lot different than what we think of as being held hostage in a castle. Absolutely, good you point. You are left to your own devices, and you can try to leave if you'd like to. Give thing it a is, shot. Thing is, there might be bandits. Right. And that's the thing about trying to leave while you are a, fr- a quote-unquote free hostage at uh, Castle Osaka. Yeah. But so so yeah, the, but I did. There was like a like a yeah something that wasn't totally congruent there, where it seems like the city's on fire and like. M- all hell is breaking loose, but then they're just back to like the kind of quietly being held hostage, and they got to watch this uh, this opera play, which I'm almost certain was the point. It was just a lot to try to wrap your head yeah. around as it as it was unfolding. Um, so yeah, some like one of the Christian regents is like, "Ah, oh, this is all going to be fine. You know, we'll pick up a fifth guy. Vote to have Toranaga killed. This will be water under the bridge." The other dude is like, uh, "No, even after that happens." We're basically hostages we're, here forever. Yeah, we're just puppets now. Yeah, yeah, we're puppets. We have no real say in what's occurring. This lady is taking the power from us. It's, yeah. Um, then Ishido and Lady Ochiba talk to one of the performers from the play, the guy mm-hmm. that in the play was playing the taiko. His name's Lord Ito. And they're basically like, hey, how do you feel about voting Toranaga to death? <laughs> you want to be our fifth. We need a fifth. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's some... Some uh, charm put in there by Lady uh-huh, Ochiba uh-huh. as well, and uh, he, he agrees to it. Yeah. 
moving on. If you're like me and either you don't have much uh, in the way of skills in the kitchen or your schedule simply doesn't allow for you taking time to cook every night, today's sponsor, Factor, is for you. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals that nobody in the house will refuse, unlike Blackthorn's rabbit stew. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Sometimes when the end of the day rolls around, I'm simply too tired to cook or don't have all the ingredients I need to make a dinner or I just want to melt into the couch, watch an episode of my favorite TV show, and to have a delicious meal magically appear in front of me. And Factor essentially accomplishes just that. We're talking two-minute meals, people. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, even breakfast, as well as midday bites. Uh, no prep, no mess meals. Factors meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. I've got two kids, too many dogs, and at the end of the day, uh, it can be extremely chaotic as a result. So it's nice that on some nights, my wife and I, when we're out of energy, we can just turn to Factor to make sure we're still eating well. I've probably had all of their meal options, all 35 at this point. Devoured them all of 2023. And uh, everything they make is phenomenal. Factor is the perfect solution. If you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required, sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash OCC50 and use code OCC50 when you check out to get 50% off. That's code OCC50 at factormeals.com slash OCC50 to get 50% off. Diving back in... Blackthorn is helping Toronaga's people like rebuild some of the city after the earthquake. Uh, when Hiromatsu rolls up, falls off his horse. So I guess he just rode like straight from Osaka, no breaks, and is uh, totally exhausted. But his return sparks this meeting between like Toronaga and his main guys, you know, where they have to decide what to do about the situation in Osaka. And this is where Crimson Sky is suggested which is a single violent rush on Osaka Castle where they eliminate the council entirely and form a new government with Toronaga as sole regent, a.k.a. Shogun. Shogun. Yeah. Now, Toronaga isn't into this idea. He, you know, he says like a couple times in this episode, like, I don't want any land. I don't want any power. I've never tried to be Shogun, and I never will. Remind you of anybody? I guess a lot of people. The, the Muad'Dib. Oh, yeah. Humble. As, <laughs> yeah. yeah. As is written. As is written. Yeah, you're right. Yes, yes. You're yes. right. Yeah, I mean, we can all see this, where this is going. He doesn't he, want He doesn't want Shogun. I don't he's, want it. He doesn't, you know. Also Jon Snow. Also Jon Snow. I don't want it. I don't want it. Yeah, but in the end, he gets it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's not into that idea of Crimson Sky now, or, or any of their ideas. Omi here pitches something out, but then, like, doesn't finish the thought. Right? He's like, no, you still have you still have time. Right. You still have time to do something, but then like he doesn't finish it. And he's like, that's and then Tornaga's like you come up with something, a plan for me that's not certain death. We're not doing Crimson Sky. But it was I, I kinda was kinda like, wait, Omi was just gonna say something. I thought he was saying like that idea is also certain death. Yeah. Um but it did seem like Omi's suggestion was they don't have a fifth regent yet. Mm -hmm. You've still got more time to see how this shakes out. Okay, okay. Just time Don't in force this yet. Right, right? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay, that uh, makes sense. I, at least that was my takeaway. But yeah, like you said, Toronaga is like, bring me something good. This, th These two options, we all die. Yeah. Uh, so Mariko meets with the head of the brothel where Kiku works to negotiate a price for her services uh, for the Anjin. The negotiations back and forth are pretty funny. <laughs> And uh, well, first of all, the head, what do you call these women that are... The, Madams? The, the head madam is not realizing that Kiku is going to be for the barbarian, not for Toronaga. Mm -hmm. Seems like she's trying to get a higher price when she thinks it's Toronaga because I, that's, Toronaga rich. That's right. Yeah. But then once she realizes it's for John Blackthorne, she's like, oh, okay, 300 will, <laughs> 300 will do. Yeah, which is, you know, this is like, I felt like it's almost like reverse economics. Right. Right. I thought they would charge more for the white guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, and also just like the it's funny that the price is dependent on the buyer rather than the product. 
Yeah. Like, I don't get to walk into a Ferrari dealership and they're like, okay, okay, 30000 for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good point. Um, it was it was really interesting, man. Like if Kiku's the best, it seems like her price is, you know, flat rate. Yeah, the lady comes out up top. She's like, 500 mon me. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I don't know mon you don't know, me versus... You, you don't know mon me versus Koku? You don't know the exchange rate? Or generous those? Koku's. Yeah, yeah I don't... I, it, the exchange yeah. rate, totally unfamiliar to me. You don't know how many mon me's are in one Koku. Exactly. Yeah. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. But yeah, because yeah. yeah, Mariko is like, no, 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 you misunderstand me. I just want one hooker. <laughs> I don't want to buy every tea house in Japan. So it seems like Monmi might have been more than generous Kokus. I, I have no idea. Um, but obviously, they they end up deciding on the number 300, and that's that. Now, we get the little scene with Kiku going to Omi and being like, no, this is good for us. I can become the best. <laughs> The biggest, the goat, <laughs> and he's just like, mm, he's yeah. bummed. Yeah, yeah he's, this is girl. He cur- um, he curves her on that kiss. He does. You know? Turns the cheek. Yeah. So that yeah does not want. Uh, not stoked that Kiku will be serving the barbarian Omi. So Blackthorn and Mariko go to the tea house to visit the ladies of the Willow World. It's obviously awkward because of the feelings between Mariko and Blackthorn, which, like I said earlier, even Kiku seems to pick up on. Yeah. There's a lot of speaking in riddles and codes occurring here. 100%. That you really had to fucking read into if you wanted to fully understand the context of these interactions. Um, you have the sake pouring, which is this rare art studied for years by courtesans like like Kiku. They This was an interesting note. They two times make reference to feeling like they're being watched. Yes. Yes. But one of the selling points that the madam and Kiku both lay out is like, this is a private place. Nobody else is going to know what goes on. It's like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, yeah. right? But then Blackthorn and Mariko are both very conscious of the fact that they are probably indeed being from the mo- From the moment they get there, it feels like a bit of a spy mission by somebody. Some kind of setup. Going some, on uh, some kind of setup, and everybody has their eyes on them. Uh, the, the 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 other servants, Kiku, like everybody, just do, you get this sense that's that they're being watched, right? And so again, this was a piece that factored into the equation that made me unsure about what all of this was about. Now, one possibility that's occurring to me, maybe they're being watched by Toranaga's people to see if Mariko will go pillow, right? Maybe. But so I don't that he, know. I so don't he know. can be like, "Gotcha," but that doesn't seem likely. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I guess Yabushige would also have reason there, to perhaps there, have spies up in here. There's, there, there's also like, a, you know, she's kind of. We're, we're, we're also back to the kind of the watching words thing. Yeah. Watch what you say. Yeah. Make sure that you're complimentary when you're supposed to be. Make sure that you're like basically that your manners are good. Yeah. You, she's like, be cool, dude. You know, uh, don't make a scene. Basically. So yeah, yeah, it's it. <laughs> At the very least, it seems like somebody's getting a report on on their behavior. Now, you know, we get we get past the sake pouring, and it's kind of like it's it's uh, and and then Kiku makes that note. It's like if if you want this place to be dark, it can be dark. Kind of saying like you want the lights out, you want to nobody to be able to see what you can do, what you're doing. We can make that happen. This is a safe space. Doesn't seem like a safe space, right? But then she moves to the corner behind them. And starts to explain a little bit about Willow World again, kind of in some pretty, in a pretty ethereal manner of speaking, with a lot of riddles and and vagaries, but an over the top like poetic, very very yeah. poetic. But we do the thing again that we kind of hadn't seen since episode one or two, where like the uh, the voice almost starts coming out of Mariko instead yeah. of Kiku as as she's translating, and and on in in that usage of of that kind of storytelling device uh, the, the the kind of the third option that i mentioned earlier came came to mind which is that making mariko go to willow world may have been just as much for her as it is for blackthorn because as she's kind of repeating these words and translating she seems to be getting a lot out of what's being said as well definitely yeah um and so it seems I, like she became aroused and then fearful or, or or calm, right? The whole thing, the explanation is that this is not just about physical pleasure. That's part of it, but it's way more than that. It's people, about release. It's about escape. Yes, it's about, people come here because they're bothered by something, whether it's boredom or fear or stress or whatever. And like we 
or uh, I am able to put put them on a different plane of existence, essentially, that right. like eliminates that. Yeah. For a short time, you're free of all your worldly troubles yeah. when you're yeah. in Willow World, right? So in the end, Mariko does not go to the room with Blackthorn and, and Kiko. But why, though? Yeah. yeah. That becomes the big question. Because I, here's my read. Kiku is she goes over to the corner, like they're they're about to go into the pillowing room, right? But she's like, first, I'm going to give you some some really pretty words mm-hmm. about what it is people come here for, right? And as she's she's feeding this to Mariko, knowing that Mariko is translating it, yeah. and then at some point they use that you know stylistic uh, device that you referred to, where we stop hearing the original version and right. just start getting it out of Mariko's mouth. But it seemed like Kiku was giving Mariko. Toto Mariko things to say that she knew made sense coming from Mariko's mouth mm. to Blackthorn because mm. my read was that Kiku fully picked up on these two, yeah, or had been told, right, and was like, "Look, this is clearly for y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even need to be involved. I'm still getting paid the same. I'm gonna help you seduce each other, sort like because mm-hmm. what she's get like they keep as Mariko is repeating this translation, they like go to her lips. A lot of what she's saying is really sultry. Yeah, it's seductive. It's sexy, and they they're like really laying it on you thick. But it's almost like Mariko gets to the point where she realizes what's happening. Like this might be a setup, or I might be being watched. Yeah, or it's my duty to not partake in this. Mm-hmm. And I need to stay focused, or what? Like it's really hard to tell. But she, she, for whatever reason, she doesn't even finish that that last line. Right. She just stops, and then Kiku is like, "You want to uh, hit the pillowing room?" And she's like, "It has to be just you, just two. you." Yeah, yeah. I cannot be involved. Yeah, I just don't understand why the setup would have come from Tornaga, and and so that makes me think that if it is, if there's somebody. That the watchers, that the watching eyes, if this was some sort of potential trap, it, it, I don't think it was Tornaga. Yeah, I don't know. He, because, I mean, we, you know, we, we definitely get, didn't get any real definitive answer right? there. We get to the convo uh, post, post Willow World, right, with with Tornaga and, and Mariko, and he's like, he's just 100% on her side. Yeah. Right? Like, he, the, the, I, he, he knows a lot about, obviously, he knows a lot about what happened with her. And, and and to her and about her family because he was partaking. So the all those explanations for why she's here and why her father did what he did and all that. I'm mean, like he's just he's very much like he's given Mariko this elevated status as translator and like given her this like new duty and 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 purpose further yeah. purpose and all of that. So like it it would just be really really weird for him to be trying to like you know sabotage her in some way. Yeah. So I mean, for whatever reason though, Mariko. But the Omi does not feel it is appropriate or okay or safe yep, for her to yep. like go take advantage of this this potential. Yeah, cool. and, and the Omi and, and Kiku and, and, and relationship. Again, I think maybe that this and the, and then when they when they say goodbye in the morning, right? There's that little furtive glance where Kiku. All right, let's l- talk about this scene. Looks because over it at Omi and yeah, we don't go into the pillowing room with Blackthorn we and don't. Kiku. No, do you think he pillowed? I don't. I think that's a pretty obvious uh, takeaway, right? Uh, one of the options. One of the obvious options. Like, oh, well, because they didn't show us, just like they didn't show us Bontaro's death, mm-hmm. it's very possible that he didn't pillow with Kiku at all. The thing that throws that theory is when Kiku is telling Mariko, like, p- she says, please tell him to visit again. I will count the moments. And it seems like body language-wise... She's like that dude blew my fucking mind. Yeah, right. Like, and then, but and that could be a play. And when she looks over at Omi, she kind of like embarrassed, and they don't really lock eyes for too long. He's and almost she like looks uh, away, uh, and he's like, guy. and he's like, ah, shit. Yeah, yeah. So something happened there. Yeah, yeah. That, now, that, yeah, it yeah. does again doesn't mean that necessarily that Blackthorn pillowed with her. I just also don't know if we're well, trying to give him too much credit to like. But I don't know, because earlier they tried to give him a courtesan, and he was like, no, I don't want any pillowing. I don't want a pillow. I don't want a pillow with uh, with a, whatever his... With Fuji. With yeah. Fuji. He's like, I don't want a pillow near her or on yeah, her yeah. or around her. <laughs> no pillowing for me. Thank you. So it's not like he's just some dude who will put it in whatever. Okay. Right? But, but, but maybe, again, we're thinking about like them talking about how they were being watched there. Yeah. 
Well, if it's a Yabushige or an Omi setup or, or hunt for information, then maybe what they want to know is if he and Mariko have some sort of relationship. So him not pillowing Kiku would have would potentially tip them off to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot going on there at the end of this thing, <laughs> which is why it's like for as much of a kind of moving along the pieces on the chessboard episode as this was, there was also, a, it was really interesting, especially at the end, trying to read into exactly what occurred, especially in Willow World, yeah. where it's just like, damn, that was, that was confusing and also yeah. lacked clarity in a million different ways. Yes, and it did. It's one of those things where you expect we'll probably get some clarification next episode, but I liked that about this one, that it was all this, there was all these subtle, mysterious things occurring that were difficult to suss out in the moment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, her complimenting Blackthorn, like, I will be counting the moments until you come <laughs> back to the brothel, was almost like over the top. Right, right. And it just makes me wonder what in the hell happened there. So, Tornaga tells Mariko that her father always intended her to survive. Right, they kind of get into like her suffering and situation yep, again, yep. right? Like you said, he's kind of seems like he's all in on her. It doesn't seem like he's a guy who you know had just set her up for some test that no. she passed necessarily. Yeah. Um, but he says Mariko's father always intended her to survive and return to finish his fight, and she's like floored by this, right? She's like, I I failed my father, which Toranaga replies, you know, your war isn't over. Mm -hmm. It seemed like Tornaga had a light bulb moment. He was like, I know part of my next move, and it's going to involve you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, aside from Crimson Sky, there's something going on. He's going to do something with Mariko, mm -hmm. potentially because of his relationship with Lady Ochiba. But when he tells Mariko, like, your dad had a, wanted you to come back and basically re like, avenge the family... That that was kind of always my thought. Like, so it was yeah. weird that it was a surprise to her. Same, and that and that's exactly what I thought in that moment. And her reaction to that, being so surprised by it, I was like, she almost like drops to her knees yeah. and does like the no, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, so that kind of threw me. And so I was really glad that the very next line was from Toranaga, who was like, "What? You didn't know that? Yeah." It's like, I thought you would have figured this. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't figure this out. You didn't. The audience did. <laughs> right? you, didn't, you didn't put these things together. So, because what, what what did she think? Right, exactly. It was just as it simple is. as her dad being like, "Well, the rest of us are going to die, but we'll we'll let you go live." Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, it 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 definitely, like you said, we had certainly kind of picked up on the fact that her him marrying her off to Bontaro was a move to save her, basically. Yeah, and yeah. I, if you and then just like assumed like. He maybe hopes that she'll be able to yeah. rectify this wrong that sure. has been done upon their family. Uh, so yeah, anyway, Tornaga tells her that her war isn't over. Then we bounce over to the Council of Regents where, shockingly, they failed to elect Lord Ito as their fifth member. Um, it was... Honestly, it was kind of shocking. I was like, they still can't get this done? They still aren't <laughs> going to elect this fucking guy? Then Ishidu has the dude... Sugiyame, who refuses to vote for Ito. Yeah, and there's there's that moment of, of a few minutes earlier, right, where I or or when they're talking about Crimson Sky the first time, maybe when uh, they're like, "This is this is a total shit show now. Everybody is everybody's being dishonest. This is a witch hunt, yada yada." And like, I think Toranaga's like, "Our only hope is that somebody kind of sees through all this bullshit and it kind of like puts Acts their foot admirably. down." And, that, and that, yes. And one dude does try to do that. Sugiyami. <laughs> yes. And he's quickly murdered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bandits, so, Barrett, like you said. So uh They're always out there. Yeah. So not 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 great because the the one guy that comes through on that on that prospect um is, qu whacked. is quickly quickly ended. Him and his whole family. Because he tries to get them all out of there and Ishido's waiting in the woods. Um Uchiba tells Ishido she hates Toronaga because it was his plan to murder her father, that Mariko's father um I'm sorry. It was his plan to have Mariko's father murder her father. It was all a Toranaga plan that that he hatched is her hypothesis. Now, we don't really know that for certain yet, although it is heavily implied over the course of the flashbacks with, we, with the way we see Toranaga handling Mariko's father and whatnot. Um, so in the end, Toranaga gets word of Sugiyame's murder. He says, like, basically, we have no choice now. I expect to be falsely impeached. I declare Crimson Sky. Crimson Sky it will be, is what, is what he says, right? 
um, and that they're also going to send a message to his half brother mm -hmm. to support them and attack Osaka. So we didn't yeah. know about this half brother until this episode. What, what is this called when you when you 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 getting you rallying rallying your banners? Yeah, what do they call it calling here? in the banners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just some, you know, yeah. we, we have no idea. That, so we're going to get a new character, at least one new character I, here. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah in the form of uh, Toranaga's half-brother who they want to support them. Now, I still wouldn't say I'm confident that this Crimson Sky thing is actually going to occur. Because it, it sounds like... The, the only thing they've explained to us about it is that the plan for Crimson Sky <laughs> is you get your, your squad, uh -huh. and then you just <laughs> bum-rush the castle... <laughs> And you kill fucking everyone. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, you know, obviously Bontaro is uh, is quite the warrior, although you know, still not totally sold on on where his alliances are or where his uh, allegiance lies. Yeah, but uh, but yes, this seems like I think Tornaga's initial thought about this being a suicide mission that it feels that they just lost like half their army. Right. So now they're. Yeah, it doesn't, from a numbers standpoint, I don't get it. Yeah. Because if they, they were already like, well, we don't have the numbers. This is going to be problematic. We need to wait this out, see what happens. Because as of right now, it's four armies against one. We're going to get crushed. But now he's like, all right, we lost half our guys to an earthquake. Crimson Sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which sounds like the dumbest of all of the possible plans. Uh, yeah. They do that shot where they're like, they're showing you the intensity on all of his men's faces. And, you know, you mm -hmm, see mm -hmm. Bontaro for one. You see Yabushige for two. And certainly one of the things that's meant to occur to you is like, how many of these guys are even on are his even fucking on, side? Yeah, totally, totally. Right? So like, yeah, I don't, yeah. I really am not sure. Again, this was another moment where it was like, man, I would love to have more information because <laughs> I don't understand what the hell is happening here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Especially now that we've talked through it. Dude, I really liked this episode. It wasn't the same kind of... Um, like intense upswing in action that that several of the other ones, or if not all of the other ones so far, have been. But goddamn, there was a lot of strategic shit going on. Yeah, I, I mean, and it so it's 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 definitely fun to talk about the kind of the the things that are unclear. I think my my kind of immediate f feeling and, and reaction after the episode is that like, I it it felt like a a, a notch too much on the the uncertainty and kind of like wait what. Like, you know what I mean? It was mostly uncertainty and mystery. <laughs> yeah. So I just, it, it, yeah. And that's okay. Uh, again, that's totally fine, especially in a show that has already taught us that it doesn't leave you hanging on those, those, on those questions and, and, and getting those answers for, for a long time. You know, it doesn't, doesn't keep batting you away and, and putting you off. So, yeah, it's not being terribly withholding. Right. So I, I, I do expect that that a lot will be, uh, you know, probably explained in the very next episode. So I, I look forward to getting some of those answers and honestly just seeing what all the Willow World stuff was about. Yeah, th this one's frustrating when it ends because you're like, <laughs> God damn it, I, you know, I gotta wait a whole nother week for this shit? Um, but I, again, I, I, another episode that I thoroughly enjoyed and I think you're right. This it's just it's the show is just really fun to talk about, man, because it's laid out very very well. They're kind of doling out the mystery mm -hmm. in a satisfying clip each week. Um and I love that. But Barrett and I will be back later this week on patreon.com/oystersclamscockles with an ad-free exclusive episode available only to those supporting us by subscribing on Patreon, taking hotline calls from listeners and uh even further digesting and discussing Shogun through chapter six, as it were. Of course, next week we'll be back here to discuss chapter seven. And that will do it for today's show. Remember, we are available on all the major podcast platforms and also in full video on youtube.com slash at Oysters, Clams, Cockles. For your viewing pleasure, please subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a like, leave us a comment. If you're on YouTube watching right now, subscribe, like, comment. We appreciate you. If you're on Apple Podcasts, rate and review the show. If you're on Spotify, throw us five stars. Uh, we appreciate y'all. For more from me, Ross Bolin, check out the Ross Bolin Podcast, wherever podcasts are played. Uh, if you're into F1, check out Formula Bone at youtube.com slash at Formula Bone, at Formula Bone on all the social media platforms. And it's also available on the podcast platforms as well. Mr. Dudley, where can the people follow you? Yo, uh, I am on Instagram at Barrett Dudley, two R's, two T's. Go to bowlandmedia.com slash shop to grab yourself some merch. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We look forward to hearing everyone's reactions on Patreon and reading them on social media. Until next time. Ha! Ha!
Oh!